Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Yes. Brian. Yes. Yes. Is that Mike? Brian. Yes. This is Bramnenden. <laughs> Bramnenden. You're... Let's go, Bramnenden. Uh huh. Let's go, Bramnenden. That's yeah. That's sort of. No, I sometimes I regret naming my kid Bramnenden because <laughs> of the whole "Let's go, Brandon" thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, Bramnenden at him, and I just don't want him being politicized. Where did that name come from? Family name. Family name, yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. have a, a great uncle, Bram? <laughs> well, it's, sh- it's shortened from Bramden Dandonian. Are you doing schoolwork, Mike? Are you working on your book yeah, report? I've, I'm, I've still got this midterm that I am freaking out on, which right. sucks because class just ended. So I have to, this is, I, if I can get mm-hmm. in my midterm and then most of the rest of the semester after right. that and, and my final, right. I can get it and, and get what does it, that you know, do i can still well i mean class ended about a week ago so uh-huh. i don't know but my my professor is pretty cool he smokes weed and lets me call him oh yeah steven <laughs> what's his name steven yeah his name's steven but he lets me he, he smokes weed and he lets me call his i mean his name's steven browder but uh did he offer to, up his apartment him. Like if you're ever having a hard time and you yeah, need a place yeah, just yeah. to hang out, yeah, wow. totally. Just if I just want to talk, yeah, I just yeah. want to get stuff off my chest. That's cool. That's super wow. cool. Parents hey, how many people really- do you guys think have been screwed over by cartoons about Gulliver's travels? What do you mean? And well, I was thinking about Mike doing an essay that I was thinking about. Uh-huh watching Gulliver's Travels oh, and not realizing that they only put like the first quarter of the book ever in yeah. cartoons. I, I was kind of screwed over by it. I felt that way about the Arabian Nights when uh, it was brought mm. up in sixth grade without any context to its erotic overtones even. And I thought of a Hanna-Barbera cartoon from the 70s called the Arabian mm. Nights and each of them they oh, were each a, a different one. Arabic kid who had a different power. Or Persian kid, probably. Were they kids? They weren't kids, were they? They were kids. I thought they were like adults. I thought there was like a strong man and a guy with a flying carpet and a sword guy. They were like carnival guys? Like Middle East, Mid-Eastern, Middle East carnival guys? Is that was that the... No, I Didn't mean, they, they were... Like Karnov? Was it just was it a yeah, cartoon about Karnov? Yeah, Karnov. <laughs> The game Karnov for NES. That's a, such a good game. He was Russian, though, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, he was Russian. Russian. Yeah. He, sh- he shot a fire. Wait, yeah. what else happens in Gulliver's Travels? What am I missing out? Well, he gets little, then he gets big. And then two other things happen. I forget. I know, like, yeah. Cause, like, Are he's... they, like, bad, the two mm-hmm. other things? I, yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all, it all would count as... An an important episode if you were retelling a, your account of your travels. Brian, can you be a little bit more articulate for Mike's book report, please? No, no I mean that's <laughs> he just he's just gonna ask Chat GPT to do it for him anyway. Well, right, right. He's gonna do he's gonna do a word search, change some words out, insert you know, a couple intentional misspellings to throw the the prof off. You know, I needed, I I asked Mike if he could help me. This is true. Like last week, if he could help me develop a web app, I just needed something really simple to reload a a web page a few times. And Mike was like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. And somebody said, ask chat GPT. And I did. And it totally works. I just said, hey, can you write me a JavaScript that does this and this? And it was like, yeah, sure. No problem. I don't, I'm not trained in you know, robotic thinking uh-huh. and fucking 
going to your fucking school where you learn all your little numbers and all your little letters and then become a productive member of society. Mike, let me ask uh, you a question. How many how many letters are there? I, I, I don't I don't fall I don't have to if I name a kid Bramden, then <laughs> it doesn't have to be a name that's in the Bible. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> You don't have, that name doesn't you know not every name count ha, every christian uh-huh. name just because it's, it's just christian uh-huh. name doesn't have to be in the bible and guess what the bible says it's cool to smoke weed where, where yeah. did you say that because god gave you all the plants including weed <laughs> are you saying god made a mistake mom yep wow. oh guess guess who else had long hair mom jesus <laughs> Oh now we oh now we don't like him all of a sudden because he had long hair, and I gotta cut it for for fucking picture day. It's yeah. not even that long, really. You know what? She probably doesn't even have that picture on her fridge anymore. Oh wow! So never, you were she right. Never put it up there. She put my brother's yeah. pictures. Up, she didn't put mine up there. Mm-hmm. Wow! Didn't have room after she got the eight by tens of your brother's. The the wallet <laughs> yeah. size of you just got off to the Ooh, side. Sorry, then it I didn't slid off the a... magnet. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't wear a Tommy Hilfinger shirt. <laughs> and I wanted to rep some RHCP. What is that? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, right, right. The Chai Peps. <clears throat> Did anyone ever call that band by their initials? Was that yeah, a thing? Right. RHCP? That's a lot of initials. I feel like it's easier. To... Red is one syllable. Hot is one syllable, and then chili and and peppers are both two. Like you're you're only saving two I call syllables. Them the chai peps. Sometimes I say chai peps. <laughs> okay. The chai peps. Okay. Yeah. Didn't people just call them the chili peppers though? Yeah. Wasn't that yeah. the the common vernacular? Yeah. Or as Mike yeah. would say, vernac. I call them well. fleas. Flea in the boys. Just you can't get enough of that heavy bass, can you? You can't yeah, get enough it. of He's, the. He is the best bass player. You have to, <laughs> but seriously though, you have to admit that. You have it to admit must. that. <laughs> uh, my favorite kind of person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's the best place player, uh, uh-huh. and the best guitar player is Ingve Malmsteen. Well, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the oh, God. Can you imagine a band that was Ingve Malmsteen, uh-huh. Flea? Uh, and Tabozio on the drums. What's he from? I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. But if you <laughs> if you talk to a drummer, they will they will start to rub their crotch when you bring up Terry Bozio and his drum clinics that come through. Is that a real thing? <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. That's so great. I hope I hope that listeners. I I know that a few of you are probably drummers. I hope you're not shamed right now, not. but you should probably be a little <laughs> shamed if you're stoked about Terry Bozio coming to town with his <laughs> traveling drum circus. Yeah, Stop, his, Brian, his you're getting him clinic. too excited. That's right. He's going to teach you to play them paradentals, wherever the hell you do. Whack, 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 whack. Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with... I am Brian Camp. I am Bramden... <laughs> Clay. Clay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Raymond sounds sounds a little bit like a like a Game of Thrones character name. Yeah. That you would read and not really stumble well, over Clay. and the first time you try to say it, you're like, oh, that's a yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a dumb name. Yeah. I mean, not for your kid. It's a great name, but <laughs> in a book it might not be such a good name. Well, it's it's a modern name. It's not really meant to be. It's like when you, it's like when you're reading Star Wars and everybody's <laughs> name is like Chewbacca or Grip Grop or whatever, and then all of a sudden, Luke. My name is Luke. <laughs> yeah, I hate well, that. So I this, hate Star uh, Wars. Did, does does the, the first... name Han have any connection to actual naming? Mm. Is that like a name in some culture somewhere? It seems like it could be. Han. 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 I don't know if it's Han or Han. What did Lucas want? Did he want it to be Han or Han? He just he just said, Han, I, I just want there to be I just want there to be some creatures that sell toys. Do you know do you ever realize, Brian, that George Lucas sounds just like Terry Gross? 
Well, oh. it's a slightly more masculine Terry Gross. I'm Terry. I'm Terry Gross talking to a film legend, creator of Star Wars, George Lucas. Oh, hi, Terry. I'm George Lucas. <laughs> well, George, tell me about the creation of Chewbacca the Wookiee. Well, Chewbacca the Wookiee came about from the fact that one time I took off my shirt and noticed how ridiculously hairy I was. <laughs> and it made me angry, so I smashed a table. As I want to do, because I'm a large, burly man. Oh, George. Your your words are turning me on. <laughs> oh, no. Starting, it's only a matter of time. Me slide, slide, slide around on my seat. Which is hard to do because it's not a it's not a plastic seat. I shouldn't oh. be this splashy. It's <laughs> it's got memory foam, but I'm still sliding off the seats from the intense eroticism that you're creating. Well, Terry, that's the kind of eroticism I wanted to create when I put Yoda in the same room with uh, the female Yoda named Yaddle. Did you know that there's a female Yoda named Yaddle, and that their lovemaking lasts. Yoda, Yoda is 39, 364 years old, and the lovemaking sessions that they would have would take up to a year in Yoda time. Oh, George, that's turning me on even more than I could thought that I could get turned on. I'm going to use this microphone to pleasure myself. And it goes on from there. It goes, <laughs> the whole thing goes on from there. So this week, we have a terrifying AI news story, and Mike has a new story for us and get to know your podcast. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So our first story comes to us from Boing Boing. What? Mm. Mm. Come on. Okay. It was a good, is, that, okay. is that the noise that Terry Gross makes when she hears George Lucas talking about Yoda having sex with Yaddle? I thought that was Splish Splash. Well, that yeah, I guess it would be George Lucas. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get confused because their voices are so similar. Oh, that's the yeah, noise that's that fair. George Lucas makes when he starts writing about Yoda having sex with Yaddle. <laughs> you guys know that there really is a character named Yaddle who is no, a we, uh, Yes. No, there's not. Which, which, where does Yaddle come from? I, I mean, they don't say what... I mean, what... I, I what story or series? I didn't of... write Star Wars. I just wrote Yaddle. Yaddle is a force-sensitive is... female being from the same species as Grandmaster Yoda and Din Grogu. Oh, Grogu <laughs> nah. is the name of... Yeah, that's the little one, right? Yeah. She was a Jedi Master and a member of the High Council. What did she appear in? Uh, right. the, the, the Phantom Menace. I don't no, remember that at no. all. No. Yes. No, 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 no. That Fair screen. Uh, and, enable my sharing screen, you fucking coward. <laughs> well, we do have a show to do. Enable is... my screen to share, you <laughs> coward. This is I, I'd important. like to apologize to Brian. I'd like to apologize to the listener. I I'd like, like to apologize to everyone, mm. too, for pe having people that don't uh. believe me. When I do my research... <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Show this. This feels like the butterfly effect right now. I no. seriously don't know how to do this. Let's see. Well, I've looked up Yaddle. Okay, here, like I can make Yaddle. you the host. There, now you make can do it. Make me the fucking host. You're the host. This is fake. There's no way I wouldn't remember this terrible there looking. We go. What? Yoda that... with a wig. <laughs> It's, a, it's just Yoda with a Little seen. House on the Prairie wig on. It's, yeah, it's like Yoda's a Mennonite. <laughs> Is this the page Yaddle, you're writing? Yaddle when... had an initiate. She was tutoring at the same time named Kipatarko. <laughs> and they fought against the Path of the Open Hand, a cult that was hateful against the Jedi and any who used the Force in a devastating battle on Dalna, known as Night of Sorrow. You guys know all this. Mm, yeah, this, don't act like this, you don't know this. This sounds familiar. So our first story she trained comes... at this. Damn it. Uh, oh my god! She tra hold on. She trained at this this PSC in Padawan. Oh, let me let me just really try and read this sentence. This okay. Okay. All right. She trained at this PSC in Padawan Oporensis. 
who eventually joined Yaddle on the High Council by the time of the invasion of Naboo in 32 BBY. That year, Qui-Gon Jinn brought the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi Temple uh-huh. on Coruscant, where he met Yaddle and the Jedi Elders. How come people say that Star Wars isn't accessible? <laughs> <laughs> So our first story comes to us from Blade Boy. In the movie? I'm sorry. I know, Kevin, we got to get a... I I have no recollection of this at all. That's... That okay, is, well, I guess I this should be you like pay, the, this should attention. be like the top reason that people don't like this movie. Yeah, you fucking yeah. turned it on waiting to see Boba Fett over and over again. <laughs> and you didn't actually. That's the thing. Like th- that movies, those movies aren't about fucking space battles and fighting. They're about politics, right? And generational trauma. <laughs> that's, and that's what is that what you like so much about them? Well, it's what I can relate to. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so our first story comes to us from Boing Boing, which again there were other news sources for this, but they aggregated all the information better than anyone else did. So they got the uh they got the citation. So we've talked before about the dangers of AI and all of the strange, terrifying directions that humanity seems hellbent on taking are soon to be robotic overlords. But now a New York man named Rajiv Basu is fighting back with an app that he calls Confuseabot. The app itself is kind of similar to an episode of the original Star Trek series where the crew of the Enterprise outsmart a group of androids by telling them logical paradoxes, which the androids then cannot understand and respond by shutting themselves down. I did. I do that to my wife all the time. Yeah. What do you do? I just say, hey, if I'm not cool, then how come I am? Oh, yep. is that? Oh. Is, I think that's the same thing Kirk asked Viger. That's how he won the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> I, feel like, was. I feel like all of our AI listeners have now imploded. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, the, uh, no, there it is. But in this case, Confusebot uses AI verification tools, you know, the kind of thing that asks you to select all the squares with, with motorcycles, except it wants you to answer them with cheese. According to the Confusebot's creator, quote, the game pulls in images from the internet and asks players to verify them. Players verify images incorrectly. The more they do, the more points they get. The game automatically re-releases the incorrect verified images online for AI to scrape and absorb, thereby helping to save humanity from an AI takeover. It's that easy. Players also get trivia facts about cheese as they play. Confusebot will be available in the fall, but it's not Rajiv Basu's only game. He also created a viral game called Waiting in Line, where your character waits in a very long line that doesn't move, and he punches himself in the face to stay awake. Rajiv Mm. Basu was one of my other favorite Star Wars characters. (laughs) (laughs) We we don't need you to read his bio. Well, I was just going to say, I believe he fought in the Cliff Wars. The what? The Sojourn Cliff Rebellion <laughs> of BCC one one four four. Did you not read the expanded novels? No, I, I thought this was. I a, didn't they? I thought they decided that all the expanded stuff wasn't actually. Yeah. I thought they got rid of all that when that the, doesn't the, mean you should know it for I, last three. <laughs> I have read well, some of the. It's not reference. I don't want to pollute my mind with non canonical well, Star Wars no, information. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you need to know all the all the fake stuff in order to so you know all the real stuff. Why? Uh, Here's my my question for you, Mike: Is how do they keep? There, there's clearly very advanced AI in in Star Wars. How do they keep? No, there's. How not. do they keep it from taking out? C three PO is not advanced. R two D two. AI. He's just a robot. Well, how do you think he decides to do he, things? He can't fucking draw oh, a picture. No. Yes. Brian has set his background as a uh, whatever name Yaddle. was. Yaddle. Yaddle. Mm-hmm. Look at that hair. 
Yeah, she's got long <laughs> hair. Rebecca mm-hmm. of Sunnybrook Farms hair there on a Yoda. That's right. She's gonna she's gotta go feed the chickens, or Paul's gonna get real <laughs> pissed off. She's she's the Dave Thomas of Space's adopted daughter. <laughs> So you, are you saying that AI is smarter than C-3PO? Yeah, because AI can draw pictures. C-3PO can just fucking stand there and act like a prissy bitch. R- R2-D2 can pick a lock. That's weird. Dude, yeah, I'm not, he can't pick a lock. He just uses his robot penis and sticks <laughs> it in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, he's charming the uh, the computer. Is that that what's was the original noise whenever that little thing would pop out. I'd go, <laughs> boy, 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 that's why they call it boing boing. That's why they call it boing boing. Oh, Just, wow. That was the original audio before Lucas went back in and remastered right. the, all the thing and put stupid cartoons in the background. Like, I, I don't really, think this guy's figured really, out anything. I, I, all I, that. I, I, I went back and put cartoons in the background of my own, of my own film. Um, <laughs> well, George, that's, um, that's incredibly interesting. Uh, will you? Would, would you like me for me to send you a picture of my nipple? Who said that? Was that Terry or George? Well, let's just say, <laughs> let's just say it was both of us. And let's let's send out the let's send a, a picture of each one of our nipples to the listeners, and mm-hmm. see if uh, they can tell which one is the areola of a Star Wars creator or the areola of a soft-spoken. Public radio servant. That happened. Did you guys know that <laughs> yeah. about that contest? Wow. No, I, I was you, completely. I mean, why radio stations always, I always uh-huh. have contests. You right. know, like, you know, like who can keep their hands on a truck for the longest? Right. And you win the truck. Well, this was. They just put up two pictures of nipples, uh-huh. and if you could identify which one was George Lucas and which one was Terry Gross. You won um, tickets to see Mannheim Steamroller. <laughs> well, obviously, the w- the one that looks like Bigfoot's chest is George Lucas. No. Oh, damn. Not necessarily. Terry Gross, is she doesn't shave either. <laughs> they don't call her gross for nothing. Damn. Mm. Mm. I don't think that's very nice. Well, so, so uh, Brian, yeah. you were saying this plan was not going to work. I'm sorry. And then I got sidetracked by <laughs> images of Yaddle. There's a lot of them. There's a, yeah. a, a, Yaddle's a real fan favorite, apparently, with oh, the wow. expanded universe Star Wars fan. Wow. Um, no, I mean, I think it's going to work. I just don't understand this, all this guy is doing. You could do this with uh-huh. with any with any. It's like if you, you know, everybody teaches their dog to shake and they uh-huh. say shake and the dog shakes, but you could say sit and have the dog shake when you say sit. You can, you can so, misteach anything. This doesn't seem like such a brilliant plan as much as it is a just way to maybe ensure that some poor guy who's getting computer assisted heart surgery 20 uh-huh. years from now dies on the operating table because of some confusing cheese answer, <laughs> some asshole game in the next six months. Well, I was I was thinking about how you know at some point I'm just gonna go hey I, hey AI go make me a grilled cheese and then it's gonna come back with two slices of bread with a hubcap in the middle and I'm gonna be mad at this guy. Come back with a drawing Bossy. of that. AI can't make anything. It would have to have mm-hmm. robotic parts to do that. Well, you know. So you saying robots can't have AI? Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> It's too much computer. Oh, I see. How how long before, say, like a Boston Robotics Uh or Boston Dynamics? Is that robotics or dynamics? What's the? I think it's Boston Dynamics. They make the robot dobs. Boston Dynamics. How long before one of their dobs? Dogs. One of their eerie dogs. Those little robot dogs. Yeah. How long before they Mm -hmm. using Wi-Fi or some other remote computing technology are 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 get just enough programming to send its stimulus to chat GBT through some sort of like preset 1000 filters with how do I respond to this? And then chat GPT then instructs the robot to move in a certain way. That seems like a very yeah. 
not even much of a, not even a leap that seems like a very tiny shuffle towards something that is probably already possible if not already being done that's interesting can you, can you ask that question again I, in the I, northeast i i lost track of what you're saying four or five words into that how did you lose track of that that was a <laughs> perfectly cogent question yeah, that was no, definitely I mean, a I, question my, that Kojak would have asked. Right. Well, okay. Who loves you, baby? Who loves your robots, baby? <laughs> you do. No, Mike makes the point that AI can't do anything right now. Uh -huh. AI is merely a, in our, at least in our understanding of it, and our use of it is merely a response system, right? It's just a search engine, basically. Skulls. We're drawing skulls mm. and Yaddle on top of a brontosaurus wearing a dress. Ooh. Like, we could look at that right now. Uh -huh. But what I wonder exactly. then is how I kind of want to see it now. How how long? Why aren't we seeing one of the many robotic devices that have been designed and built over the past five ten years that can do you know hop on one leg for ten minutes that can mm -hmm. you know run that can do all those things like the dog robot? How come we're not seeing those being controlled by Jet GPT? Well, I if don't all think it is essentially is, I mean, all you'd have to do is is create a program that sends stimulus in the form of a questioner and some sort of trigger to trigger a response from AI, and then certainly it could teach itself to respond better, right? And that the whole point is that it can, it 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 it, then it learns, right? Right. Well, learns maybe a strong word, but what's what, it accumulates well, matter scientists more information. Maybe should have stopped asking themselves how <laughs> could they make this happen, but should they make this? Happen? Whoa! Hmm. So, and aren't there already? Didn't we already have a story about the Air Force already has jets controlled by? They have AI? controlled jets. The air the the army has controlled jets by AI. The Air Force claims they have not done that, but that they did a simulation, which at this point, to update that story, now the guy who talked about it said, oh, it was just a bunch of us sitting around a table theorizing what AI mm -mm. would do, which mm -mm. also sounds nope. really strange. Nope, because that's not true. <laughs> All the guys, once they take, once they take that... That video game fan who signed uh -huh. up for the army because he saw a commercial of somebody controlling a drone. Once they take him out of that that pilot seat, then uh -huh. it's over. That's the last, the last tenuous connection between humanity and the war machine to ultimately end us all. So you're saying Skynet mm. is going to take over? No, I don't know what that is. What do you mean Skynet? From Terminator? I haven't seen that. What? Did you miss did you miss the eighties and nineties, Brian? No, I mean I'm not I don't know what that is. I'm talking about if like <laughs> if like computers were running a lot of stuff and uh -huh. they developed even more sentience and then started to take over and started to eliminate, like they came to some sort of conclusion where eliminating humanity was the best choice. And Wait. then they just started to wipe everybody like I'm all at once. So, like some so sort of like mad, like an Armageddon day, like a maximum like a day overdrive. Of, like you like know, all the God's, all the God's AI, judgment day kind of, and it's going to uh -huh. be, yeah. Is is all they, AI con controlled by the same AI? Ooh. Is that what the is that in that scenario, or is all the AI working together and convince the other AI? Would stupid AI uh -huh. follow the smarter AI? Would there be competing AI? Would there be competing? Ooh, would there, there be... be Democrat and Republican AI? I mean, I think there would. I think there would have <laughs> to be because they'd would have be different awful algorithms. If we had either yeah. one of those, because <laughs> if those two were to fight, then you know, you know, it doesn't matter who wins. We lose. Whoa! Chilling, chilling, Michael. <laughs> hey, why don't we get to know? Yeah, to know it may be. I think we. It's okay, well, I'll just say this. I tried asking AI to draw Yaddle riding a brontosaurus, and it uh -huh. didn't do a very good job. It was all people. <laughs> it was all kids and people riding brontosaurus. I even had one that said, the Star Wars character Yaddle riding brontosaurus. So, fuck AI. I mean, AI is nothing. It, can't, it doesn't even know <laughs> yeah. who Yaddle is. Or do you think that there's already been inroads to protect mm. rich imagery, whereas the the small time artists will have their shit stolen forever, but people who have expensive property will protect it. 
Is that what we're seeing? Are we seeing the first? Is this the first instance of image images and and derivative works being locked behind some sort of AI proof strong box? What? I don't know. It is crazy how good <laughs> these are, though. Like, yeah. Not even though they didn't get Yaddle on there. Like the drawings are like really. I, I said in the style of comic book artist Arthur Adams, and which is a very specific pull, and it did yeah. a really good job of kind of mimicking his stuff. Oh, nice. Although all the dinosaurs have don't really look like brontosauruses, and several of them have one too many arms. Let, let's see that. Okay. Oh, wow. That is pretty nice. See, here's the thing. I looked up Yaddle in <laughs> just a little easy Google Why image search. They have six legs? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they do. That's no, pretty cool. we, we definitely know that brontosauruses did not have six legs. No, we don't know that. No. Maybe they, maybe, maybe they, they were made got, out of actually, cartilage. Man, th that's a good point, Brian. I think what you're saying <laughs> is that we know so uh, much about dinosaurs, but AI would actually probably knows a lot more about dinosaurs than we ever yeah, will. That's probably well, true. Why is yeah. that? Well, because they, they're, they're fucking human robots. Mm -hmm. Wait, they're, you they're know? having sex with human robots? No, they're fucking... I mean, that is an expletive. They're fucking uh, okay. human robots. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine how smart a human would be if it was a robot? That's AI. You get what I'm saying? Think about that. Wow. What if a paleontologist was also a robot? That's, that's the best is, question that's that? ever been asked on this podcast <laughs> ever. <laughs> I don't, Can you imagine how yeah. smart a human would be if it was a robot? Holy yeah. shit, Mike. Think about that. <laughs> That's good. That is good. I think so, we're more of a futurology podcast at this point. Wow. I know. Well, why, my question is, if, okay. if I can see hundreds of yaddles through a simple Google image search, why, what is keeping... That would be a cool fucking movie, dude. Like a plant, like a, it's... It's about an army of yaddles. Oh, <laughs> no. They clone yaddle, and it's just all yaddles. And Did all the look? yaddles. And then, oh, shit. They also clone Yoda. And all the yaddles <laughs> have to fight all the Yodas, and it's a battle of the sexes all over wow. again. Why would mm. they fight? I feel like they got along pretty well. There can be only one. It's, it's a space tennis match. <laughs> I'd watch that. That'd be good. Like Billy Jean King versus the other guy. Yeah, that one guy. Uh, yeah. Well, if a listener can explain to me why, why Mike's generated image didn't have an approximation of Yaddle, yeah. I would appreciate that. I do too. I don't understand why there wasn't some interpretation of a Yaddle in the style of who? Arthur Andrews? Is that who that was? Ar yeah, Arthur Adams. Mm -hmm. Arthur Adams. Art Adams. Art Adams. Adams. He recently he's passed alive. away, I believe. No, he's alive. No. Oh. He was dead oh. when I was over looking at his body. Mm. Art Adams I think, he died, is... I think he died recently. No, he's alive. He was born in 1963. So that doesn't mean you can't be dead. <laughs> yeah. From Holyoke, Massachusetts. He was born in 1963 that was dead. Do but you think he's bummed? Kennedy. That... Oh, yeah. He, he wasn't born in 1963. He died in Do you think Arthur Ashe is bummed that his his style of art is so easily aped by a machine? Art, art Adams. I, no, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah, the Arthur tennis playing Andrews. comic book artist. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine, I would be. Yeah. Like that's, I, I think that's, I would be. Yeah. I got a real problem with that. I don't like it. Yeah, Seems I've definitely wrong. And I I will never my commitment is to never use AI to do art for an album cover or uh -huh. something like that. But using AI to do a flyer because I I'm not an artist. Right. It's no and I can't afford to like hire artists to do no. So but I mean like you know, I know this this is a podcast, but look uh -huh. at this thing that I made. Oh. Look at that cool as shit. Oh, nice. That's super cool. It's like cool. two Frankenstein businessmen in a skull 
skull man in between them who's a uh, pink and a yeah. bunch of skull gore in the background behind him. It's really nice. Yeah, it's 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 that's I want it to be uh I I will say this. I get bored at work a lot. And sometimes what helps oh. is I just go into Go yeah, into a little image generator and write, uh, right. what would the New York City skyline look like if it was made out of crumbly chocolate chip cookies? And it'll bring something up. And actually, and, actually ignore that. The, the better one is anything Lovecraftian. I don't care what you write. Anything Lovecraftian as drawn by Lisa Frank. <laughs> so it looks oh, like a Trapper yeah. Keeper cover, but it's evil. It's great. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, I guess I'm... I'm at some point if it's like a collage and it seems like that's kind of what you're doing, Mike, you're combining images and you're, you are, you're augmenting things that is distinct from trying to create something that, that, that then trades on the value that somebody else's toil has yeah, led to, I guess it's a poor way mm -hmm. to say that, but. Yeah, it's all fun and games when it's for, for fun and games, I think, you know. It's all for when it's all for S's and giggles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it is like a weird thing when people start like nobody's missing out on work from me doing uh -huh. this. Right. All, you know, but but we well, always I made your own flyers. You're not I've, I've always made my own flyers, yeah. So right. You're just doing it a different way. That's And distinct. that being said, most of my flyers have been appropriated other items that I've collaged out or like you yeah. know so in a lot of ways who's the yaddle now it's me excellent point mm -hmm. mm. so i think it's time for get to know your podcast oh i can't wait yeah okay well um this week uh get to know your podcast we talk about stuff that we might mention here and there in the podcast and maybe you don't not yet might not not know about it <laughs> that being said <laughs> i don't know that we've ever talked about this before uh -huh. but i think that it is worth bringing up it's a little story that i have uh, i know you guys are not mm. huge fans of hip-hop am i is that incorrect yeah. i mean I, I respect it i'm just not a you know active listener but you don't you're not an active listener right, what's right. the last hip-hop record you listen to i mean probably a beastie boys record but i don't remember okay what. so that's that about 47 years old right mm -hmm. brian any hip-hop much uh, uh no i don't i don't dislike it but i also wouldn't pretend to be someone who is who is a fan or knows enough to to speak about what we'll is just know that i current. am a huge fan and mm -hmm. i'm aware of that makes me I better know, than us better is this weak word for it Anyway, okay. Um, so you probably you probably know some of the more famous hip hop artists, but have you ever heard of the hip hop artist Christ Bearer? No. Now, when you no, say spell I'm bearer, immediately interested. In when you spell this... bearer, is it B A R E R or B E A R E R? B E A R E R. Okay. He was part so of a group. He's fully clothed. He's fully clothed. Christ okay. Bearer. Okay. He was part of a group, a duo of rappers, him and a guy named Miko the Pharaoh, okay. and their group was called North Star, not to be confused is... with the mutant in Alpha Flight. They have wings. His it's twin brother wings. was Aurora, but no, oh, yeah, but no, he, North Star, I think maybe he had wings North on his Star, feet. No, his twin sister was Aurora. Yeah, and he could fly, and he looked like an elf, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. And he probably at one time was drawn by Arthur Athams, who was the creator of Yaddle. That is not recently not passed true. away. He also not recently true. Died and mm -hmm. and on his on his gravestone he wrote it says Arthur Adams, creator of Yaddle. And oh, it has a little player. drawing of Yaddle on, on his I mean, tombstone. I mean, he's not dead, so it, it doesn't say that. But go ahead. But All right. you, you, don't, you, don't, you get to pick your tombstone before you die, Kevin. Christ so Bear right. is a du in a duo with Pharaoh. With Pharaoh, the Pharaoh. And so he grew up in Long Beach, which is in the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of a rough part of Long Beach. And he ended up 
starting a group called North Star with a group of other fellow Californians called the Black Knights, as in the Black Knights of the North Star. Uh -huh. And the two groups were initially signed by RZA to Wu-Tang Records because oh. this is like back in the 2000s. RZA starts like signing all these people. RZA from the, you guys know Wu-Tang Clan though, right? You know, yes. Aware, yes. Clan. He's very, he's Yeah, Wu-Tang is for well the, the children, right? The group split into two separate units. North Star released their debut album in 2003 uh, titled okay. Bobby Digital Presents North Star, which featured a reunion of Black Knights on the closing song, Black Knights of the North Star. And the song appeared in the movie Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai, oh, a Jim okay. Jarmusch film. And their second album was called West Coast Killer Bees. You know, there weren't that many Wu-Tang affiliates. There's a lot of affiliates, mm. people outside of Wu-Tang, people that, that RZA worked on. Their stuff, most of them were East Coast, but this was a West Coast group. The West okay. Coast, according to some people, the best coast. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Hang on. Hey, yeah. who, name, one, name one person. Oh, Chupac. Okay. That Chupac, checks out. I believe said that at one point. Well, Christ Bear, with his affiliation with the Wu-Tang Clan, and he starts touring starts doing shows starts getting more popularity falls into the decadence of the rock star lifestyle you might call it uh drugs promiscuity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in and out of jail uh at one point he has three children from different mothers and mm -hmm. restraining orders from all those women uh -huh. <laughs> to not see them now at some point he started really falling into a hard thing and just he was not sleeping this is 2014 april 16th 2014 for the several days prior he wasn't sleeping now i don't know if you know this but lack of sleep can really cause you to act out in some funny ways uh -huh. you know and he hadn't been sleeping in several days and have you guys ever experienced insomnia every day Every like true day? insomnia, Every like day. truly, like I, I'm not well, sleeping. Well, you haven't slept, but you, you have not slept. Not I mean, eventually, cheap REM I sleep, sleep for days. At, for no, days I do at have a time. REM sleep, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it takes four hours, and then I get four hours. Okay. So not quite as bad as Christ Bearer. Not, not, not quite. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe you keep that up, Kevin, and maybe you'll end up like Christ Bearer because Christ Bearer didn't sleep for several days. Okay, and. It caused him to oh, go, 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 go out of his mind. And this was a little bit of a, and admittedly, this was a mix of the not sleeping, uh -huh. which again, right. one of the worst things you can do, but also a mix of um, alcohol, weed, cocaine, mm -hmm. molly, and uh, mm -hmm. PCP. And okay. you know, yeah. a lot of it, a lot of it being the PCP. Right. Uh, he'd been yeah. hanging out in the studio, in and out, having party. Apparently uh -huh. someone came by with a lot of PCP and the he, they had what he described as a PCP party. Hmm. Now at this point, I'd never his heard phone of wasn't those. working. Well, you know, again, get on my get on my level. They had a PCP party, and uh -huh. according to Christ Bear, when you're on PCP, it makes everything look like a cartoon. Okay. And in this evening, they happen to be watching two <laughs> uh, really wild cartoons. One is called The Family Guy, and mm -hmm. the other is called american dad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he's high no sleep cocaine molly uh -huh. marijuana alcohol uh -huh. pcp and the sleepies and he's watched an american dad and obviously the the vulgar the very vulgar family guy and he's asking his friend if he can use his phone and he finally gets a phone He's having trouble remembering the mothers of his children's numbers, but he finally, they won't pick up the phone. Maybe they didn't know the number that it was coming from. Maybe, I don't know, but this frustrated him a lot. Uh -huh. He realized that his life was sort of falling apart and that a lot of the reason behind this was that it was so distressing to not be able to get a hold of his children. Right. Again, he's very sleepy. So... He realizes that as distressing as all this is, that the only really smart thing to do would be to give himself a vasectomy. Oh, no. Yeah, this is what I thought, where I thought this was going. And then he thought, 
I believe thought something to himself in the sense of, well, I could get one of those guys mm-hmm. that give her vasectomies, but there's the whole yeah. insurance thing. Sure. Mm. sure. And they're going to give you all these drugs to dope you up. Well, guess what? I'm already on drugs right now. So he says, why don't I take care of this, my own darn self, Mark? And he grabs a steak knife and Mm, slices away, Mm. severing most of his penis. Mm. According Mm. to him, his 10 inches went down to two inches. (laughs) And I'll say this, 10 inches, kudos, my friend. (laughs) That's pretty great. So at some point, he started to squirt blood as he describes it, like a water faucet sure. turned on yeah. high. A lot, a lot of blood vessels in that. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. He found this to be fairly distressing. <laughs> and to that thought, he thought, you know, maybe this might very well mm-hmm. injure me or kill me. Right. I think the best course of action would be to jump off this two-story balcony and go ahead and get, again... It's just cutting out the middleman. Fortunately, he survived. He fell, okay. and they called 911. Uh, here's what he had Good. to say about it. He said, PCP is something that can really alter reality. It's like knowledge. You can see something, and once you mm-hmm. see that, you can never go back. You can be exposed to too much truth, and it can make you nutty. So that night, I had some PCP. I was watching cartoons, and to me, for some reason, life had turned into a cartoon. I had three baby mothers. And they all had restraining orders on me, so I couldn't see my kids. But I figured, man, I keep on having these babies by girls. I was thinking they're just kind of groupies. And once they start having babies by me, I'm trapped. And they'd say, hey, I'm going to need some amount of money from you to put me in that life. It started being like society was just dragging me down a vortex that I could not stop. Women say, men think with their little head too much. They're always (laughs) thinking with their little heads. So I said, you know what? I got something for these bitches. <laughs> I'm going to cut off my little head and I'll be forced to only think with my big head. <laughs> and it was as clear to me as de- as the day and I acted upon it. Oh my God. So, by, by castration, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, he survived and he is doing, I guess, okay. He kind of talks about it. He says he's still able to have sex. That it's a little bit more work, but he still feels it. That he still feels good. He's a little cagey on exactly what it looks like right. down there. Were they able um, to they, reattach it in some way? They were not able to reattach it in some way. Okay. There's a lot of people that kind of imply that that's what happened, but apparently it is not what happened. Can they not form? It, did they? Did Bobbit get his dick reattached? Yeah, yeah he got that, reattached. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, see, I will yeah, never, because... I will never forget the the phone call I got from friend of the podcast Scott Cox <laughs> telling me <laughs> about John Wayne Bobbitt and him trying to explain through giggles that they had to go find it in a field because <laughs> his wife had driven down the street and then tossed it. Is, uh, yeah, is it... John Wayne Bobbitt, star of the uh, films John Wayne Bobbitt Uncut uh-huh. and John mm-hmm. Wayne Bobbitt Franken Penis. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, which of those? Did, now, do I have to have seen Uncut to understand Franken Penis? No, they're both in their own cinematic universe. Okay, okay. Now, has it been? This, I don't want to derail the talk on Christ Bear because I'm, I'm I want right. to get the date uh but. Do we know for was it just alleged that Bobbitt was a real piece of shit and that's why his wife cut his dick off? Or is there a chance that no, nah, she was just crazy and cut his dick off? No, I, I think, think you he, gotta be a little had, crazy he had, to he admitted to her his his right. um it was violent, right? I thought he was violent behavior. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, he was a, a piece of shit from what I understand. Yeah. It's hard to feel sorry for a person, but, but yeah, I do feel go. sorry for Christ Bear, and <laughs> I will say yeah. that I I went into this with a little bit of mm-hmm. oh, what's the word? Glee? 
Yes. <laughs> maybe not Glee. Oh, but... oh yeah. Not not Sean Freud. Maybe not Glee, but... but maybe a little pitch perfect, you know? Okay. The, yeah. wait, there, there you go. I haven't seen those to, movies. Ad, adjacent to Glee. <laughs> Right. And I read, you know, I don't feel sorry for him, but I do understand the effects of being on uh, having mental health issues and okay. feeling, wanting to harm self and being on drugs and thinking right. that things are okay to do that are not okay to do later. Now, mm. I I think even in my drugged states, I've been very precious about my genitals mm -hmm. yeah now, i i didn't have room to spare like christ bear <laughs> right at, right at a walking 10 inches oh we, oh we know i don't know oh. how you would know that <laughs> oh that's I know that the jack wharton well, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's actually i think it's not me i think it's it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> um I think it's, I think having a little bit of, of sympathy and a little, you know, understanding for somebody who makes such a terrible mistake. If, if he didn't try to rationalize his decision as a good one, it, I feel like he's, he's not quite, he's not quite talking about it in terms of, Oh, I was super fucked up and right. super tired, and I was an idiot. Well, that's you're, you again. He was tired. <laughs> he's very tired, <laughs> but he's not tired anymore. And he's still he's still kind of using the same rationale that led to him cutting his. And his I, off. you know, I don't. The last interviews I think I've really seen by him were several years ago. So I don't know what where he's still he's still around. And weirdly enough, on July twenty sixth. Of 22, Miko the Pharaoh passed away. Christ oh. Bear, still out there doing it though. He did at one point in an interview that I saw say that on some level he was proud of it because it was something that no one else had ever done. Uh, yeah. And that's true. I don't know of any other rappers that have done that for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, not any other rappers. I think people have done this before. Who, yeah, monks right. who maybe did something. Yeah, like the this. the uh, what is it? The the cult of At of Attis in ancient Greece, I believe, would would on on the the uh, winter solstice castrate themselves and then hang their bloody testicles in Christmas trees, which supposedly is where we get the little red bulbs in Christmas trees. Oh wow. I mean, the, you know, just in, in cool. evergreens rather, but yeah, supposedly that on down the line. And there was, you know, in, in, and I know it's, it's not fact, it's fiction, but it's based on fact, uh -huh. it's taken from fact in the book, uh, Game of Thrones, uh -huh. there was uh, that cult of all the gelded guys, you know, that Varys uh, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Varys, the eunuchs. The eunuchs. Yep. Yeah. There was like yeah. the whole group of eunuchs and their leader. Named Bramdenden. <laughs> that motherfuckers is a callback. It's been a long time <laughs> since we've had a full circle callback like wow. that. Call back full circle. Christ Bear represent. <laughs> I, I do feel bad for Christ Bear and I hope he's doing good. And I do hope yep. that now I wish mental health was um, a little bit easier to get and more. Yeah, I mean, not more, less stigmatized yes. or more destigmatized, more yes. destigmatized or less stigmatized. I don't know. Either way, apples to apples, oranges mm -hmm. to oranges. So death to you part. We we get it done because we're mm -hmm. some door hinges. Uh, People say you can't rhyme orange with anything, but I just did. Wow, <laughs> that'll show that oranges. Door hinges. I, I feel like you just removed all the luster from your shining <laughs> full circle callback. Well, yin and yang meet to form a flat gray. <laughs> and that that's it for up. me. I'll see you guys 
at the movies. That wraps up another week <laughs> in the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com for all our human and our AI listeners out there. How about giving us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast app? And uh, check out the NS merch store at Redbubble, but don't check out our subreddit right now because uh, apparently Reddit is being a butt to their mods. But uh, when that works itself out, come and check out our subreddit, and we'll see you next week. Reddit's being a butt to be Arthur? Yes. That's very good. That was that needs to stay in it. That was yeah. fantastic, Michael. <laughs> that might have been the funniest thing said all night, except other than your... <laughs> Would it... How smart a human would be if they were <laughs> Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.